Have you heard about the seed flow test? This is a test to see if your seeds are viable. You take the seeds, you put it in a jar with some water, and if they float, they're dead. We throw those away. If they sink, they're viable and will germinate. But does this test really work? That's the topic of today's video. The first question we have to ask is, how do you do the test? And when I searched the internet, I found lots of different recipes, and quite honestly, most people don't even tell you how to do it. Some people just fill the jar with water and put the seeds on top and wait until they settle. Other people add some soap. Now that's a critical addition. Soap reduces the surface tension of water. That makes things sink easier. An example of this that you might be familiar with is the way we catch fruit flies in the kitchen. You take a little bit of cider vinegar, put it in a container, and if you let that sit out, the fruit flies can land on the water. They're so light that they just stand on it, like the insect in this picture. But if we add a drop of soap, it reduces the surface tension, and the fruit flies fall to the bottom, and they end up being trapped. Some people take the seeds and water and shake it up and then see which ones float. And how long do you wait to see if the seeds float? Some people measure this after a couple hours, and others say you should wait 24 hours to see if they float. So here's the first fundamental problem we have with this test. Nobody can agree on how to do it. So when you see someone on the internet saying, do the seed test float and check your seed, that information is only useful if you know how the test was done. And as you know, most people, when they post things on the internet, they don't explain how they actually did the test. There have been some very good citizen scientist tests done, and I'd like to review a couple of those. A couple years ago, I got some fresh red pepper, and I harvested the seeds from those. I washed the seeds, dried them, and then I did the float test. Now, the way I do the float test is I just lay the seeds on top of the water. No soap, no mixing it up. I then took all the floaters. Remember, the floaters are the dead seeds. They're not going to germinate. And I tried to germinate them in my baggie method. And what I found was 50% of them germinated. I also tried some camassia seed. 79% of the sinkers germinated and 75% of the floaters germinated. Now, the difference between those two numbers is basically zero. The float test didn't tell me anything about the viability of the seeds. Here are some other tests that other people have done on the internet. The float test is used a lot for marijuana seeds to see if they're viable. But if you put marijuana seeds on water, most of them float. And in fact, they germinate within 24 hours. Someone else did a really nice test with proper controls to see what happens with radish seeds. Almost all the floaters germinate. Another test I found looked at 12 different types of pepper seeds. And this person did some really nice controls to see how the float test works. Bottom line, it doesn't work on pepper seeds. Here's another interesting test. If you take true pepper seeds, now this is the pepper that we use for our spices, all of those seeds will sink to the bottom of the water. If you take papaya seed, they tend to float. Now, pepper seed is more expensive, so some companies mix these seeds when they make up a jar of spices. And one way to tell if your spice has been adulterated with papaya is to do a float test. They should all sink to the bottom. There are even scientific studies that have looked at this. One interesting one I found has to do with Arabidopsis. Now, this is a little weed that has been extensively studied in science, and there are hundreds of different mutations of this plant. We know more about this plant than any other plant on Earth. Well, it turns out that certain mutations are floaters, and other mutations are sinkers. So here we have the same species of plant with some floating and some sinking. In fact, the picture on the right shows the seeds starting to germinate. Now, the results here aren't really surprising because the ability for a seed to float depends very much on the seed coat. A change in the seed coat will change the way it reacts with the water. So genetic mutations should end up with some seeds that are floaters and some that are sinkers. There are a number of other scientific studies that have looked at this float test, and they pretty much all agree it really doesn't work. 
Now, there may be some very specific cases, but as a general rule, you can't use it to check the viability of your seed. The ability to float or not float depends very much on the characteristics of that seed, its shape, the smoothness of the outer seed coat, whether or not it has any hairs or fuzziness on that seed coat. How heavy the seed is is also important. Now, there's a much better way to check the viability of seed, and it is a good idea to do this, particularly for older seed. And I've described that procedure in this video right here.